Hey guys, so as part of our Skulltober process, I recorded or created this little guy right here for day number four, which is Zombie. And I thought it would be a good idea to use this one to teach you guys how to do subsurface inside of Blender. With a very, very simple process, you can get to this result. I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to do it. So let's go. The subsurface is one of those topics that can really, really confuse people. And I don't want you to be one of those people. I want you to use this tool and understand how this tool works so you can get the most out. Before we jump into the setting, it's just a quick thing. What the hell is a subsurface? Well, you guys need to understand that there are different types of materials in the real world. And there are also different types of materials in the 3D world. And at the end of the day, we want to transfer those materials from the real world into the digital world. Subsurface is one of those materials. And the way this works is that usually when you have a material such as wood or concrete or something the rays of light are going to hit on that element and they're going to bounce back into the camera and we're going to be able to render that material so surface allows us to have as the name implies several surfaces underneath the first surface and bounce those rays at different depths this is going to give us this sort of like a jello or very like semi-translucent material what kind of objects do do you use or are we going to be using subsurface for skin wax Wax, sometimes milk, a cream, some certain fruits. Like there's a lot of objects in the real world that if you want to get the, the most amazing result, you are going to be using subsurface. And it's actually very easy to set up, but I find that people sometimes get a little bit confused with how to do it. So the first thing we need is, of course, an environment. The One of the most important things about subsurface is that a light plays a very important role on how that subsurface looks. So right now, this character, I'm going to eliminate the material and I'm just going to add a new one right here. I'm going to keep it white for now, but we're going to change them a little bit later. Let me go now to the environment settings right here. And on the color, I'm going to add an environment texture. And over here, we can open any of our elements. So for instance, I believe we have... There we go. So we got this pine attic effect right here. Now, if one, this is something that not a lot of people know, but inside of Blender, if you want to rotate this thing, you actually need to go to the shading tab. And then over here, go to the world. Here's where you're going to have your, your attic. And uh, you can use uh, this node, which is just a texture coordinate node. So I'm just going to press Shift A. Shift A, look for a texture coordinate. Texture, there we go. And we're going to use this to plug this into a mapping node. There we go. We're going to place the uh, generated, in this case, it's going to be the uh, vector. And this one's going to go over here. And now if we, we can even like look at it here in the rendering tab, we can rotate the Y axis, or in this case, the Z axis to rotate our element around. So I'm going to position this thing with the light on the back of the character. As you can see right here, the main window or most of the main windows are going to be back there. So we're going to be using this Z rotation to push this guys back. There we go. Let's go back to layout mode. So here inside of layout mode, we have this thing right here. Of course, I'm going to bring the strength down a little bit. So I'm going to say, I don't know, like 0.1, because the more contrast you have on the light, the more easy it's going to see the subsurface effect. I'm going to press a shift A and I'm going to add a new light, um, area light element, this one right here. And we're going to move it back. And this one's going to be coming from the back of the scene into our character. So again, it's kind of like pretending to be the window on the back of our character. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I want to softer shadows. And then you can just right click and say adjust light power. I'm just going to start scrolling until we get a very high contrast there with the light. Something like that should be more than enough. Maybe that, that one's a little bit too much. Let's go back a little bit. So I, want, I don't want to like uh, overexpose the whole thing. Just a little bit more. There we go. Now, if you select your object, your character, and you go to the material properties down here, you're going to be able to see that we have this subsurface effect. If we just turn this on, automatically, we're going to start getting subsurface. And as you can see, we're going to get a very sort of like natural subsurface where we get red and in this case, a little bit of yellow, like poking through the character. If we change the color of the character, let's make the material or the character's material, as you can see, green. Nothing's going to change, or at least it's not going to be as efficient right now because the subsurface color is actually taking over. So what we want to do here, let's bring the saturation back to zero, is we want to go to the subsurface color, and this one's going to affect the main color of our character. So if we want this sort of like zombie, I'm going to go for this effect. I'm going to make the skin a lot less like colorful. 
And there we go. Now, this one looks really bad right now. And the reason is that the subsurface radius is a little bit too much. There's a little, uh, a little bit or a couple of options that you can use to minimize the amount of surface that you have. But usually just using this slider, just reducing the amount is going to be a good way to do it. However, if you do this, if you lower the subsurface amount, you do need to bring a little bit of color back into your object. Otherwise, you're kind of like competing against the base color, which was white, and the subsurface color. So as you can see, we can get this very nice green color right here for our character. Now, here's the important part. These little things right here, it might seem like they're not doing a lot, but they're actually doing like everything in our subsurface thing. The way subsurface works is you have your layers and we're telling it which layers we're absorbing and which layers we're letting like bounce back into the camera. Right now, since we have one, 0.2, and 0.1, we're telling that we want the red channel to be, to be the most important one. And that's why we're seeing this sort of like red hue on the subsurface of our character. But if we bring this all the way down to zero, and we, for instance, push the green channel up, you're gonna see that now the subsurface turns green. If we turn this one off and we push the last one, the subsurface is gonna turn blue. So this is how you control the subsurface. If you want a traditional red subsurface, you keep the red channel at higher points. But if you want a different type of subsurface, which you might need for other objects like gummy bears or something like that, you're gonna be modifying this guys right here. In my case, I do wanna have this sort of like a red hue. So I'm gonna go back here on the reds. Usually a one is fine. I am going to give it a little bit of green, so I'm going to push the green up a little bit. As you can see, we get red and green. It's going to give us this sort of like yellowish, orangish a hue. And then just a tad bit of blue, just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it, so let's do like a 0.2. And it's going to, again, play with our elements right there. Now, the subsurface IOR is also important. The index of refraction is very similar to what we have usually with glass. So the lower the index of refraction, the more we're going to be able to see so that the more we're letting the rays just like pass through. As you can see, it stops at one because basically if you go under one, it would just like deflect into other areas. So at 1.01, we get a lot of subsurface. And if we start bringing this up, what we're saying is, hey, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to escape from that sort of like IOR. And as you can see, we're not going to get the same sort of effect. You can see it right here on the center of the character. And if we bring this down, the center is going to be looking a little bit more like jelly like so i usually don't mess with this one a lot uh, 1.4 is usually a good way to do it now let's play a little bit with the lights to really bring this character home and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the environment i'm going to bring this light to 0.01 i don't want to have a lot of environment look at that that's looking very very nice and of course we're gonna uh duplicate this light and let's bring this forward and have it right here pointing towards the character. This one, I'm going to adjust the light power. I don't want to have as much light power. I just want to kind of like, like bring a little bit of light into the scene. There we go. And uh, another thing I want to do with that one particularly as I want to go to the color information. And I kind of want to go to like a cold information. For this one, I'm actually going to go to a warm information. Very traditional sort of like a two color effect that we're going to have here. And I push this one a little bit closer. I kind of want to make this kind of like more of a rim light right here. And then I'm going to control D again. And just, oh, or, oh. Control D. Shift, sorry, shift. There we go. We're going to press a shift D. And I'm going to use a, this new light that we have right here. Just to bring some extra like portrait light here to the character to the front of the character i'm going to change the color on this one as well a little bit i'm going to make it smaller so it's a little bit more contrasty and of course we're going to adjust the light power and this one is just to to make sure that we don't have like super strong shadows on the front it's something like that that looks good and that's it. That's how Subsurface works here inside of Blender. Now, if you want to see a very little quick extra tip right here, I want to change the colors of the eyes. So I'm going to go to the object right here. It's a, it's a Dynamesh object, by the way. I'm going to press L on this linked element right there. I'm going to hit uh, L right there on the eye. There we go. And then... Where is it? And then, oh, I actually don't want to change the light. There we go. And I'm going to shift and L the other eye. There we go. 
both eyes selected we're going to go to the materials we're going to assign or create a new material and we're going to assign the material to that selection create a new one and that's going to be just like a glossy like white material as you can see right there did it work is the question i don't think it worked let's do it again so let's just select that eye and that eye with l you can also select it over here and assign this one i'm gonna bring the roughness down because i want to have it a very sort of like shiny effect perfect i might want to go to the base color and make this a little bit darker actually dark eyes look very nice right there you can even make them metallic so they reflect more of the environment another thing we can do here is just do another final light so i'm gonna shift d this one right here so that we have another like light over there on the eye we're gonna adjust the light power of course so that we don't overdo it but hopefully we're going to have a little bit of a reflection right there. Now, before we finish, one last thing that I want to talk to you about is this ambient occlusion pass, which is a very simple pass that allows us to add a little bit of ambient occlusion to the character and make some of the shadows a little bit darker. And it plays very nicely with the, the subsurface because it allows, to, it allows us to get rid of some of that effect. I also believe that we can change the color of the ambient occlusion right here. So if you feel like it's like looking a little bit too dark or something, we can play a little bit with it right around here. So it's very simple. You're just going to add here on the material tab, you're going to add this ambient occlusion node. You're going to connect that to a color ramp, to the factor of the color ramp. And then we're going to use this mix shader node. The color information of the ambient occlusion is going to go into the factory information. And our traditional shader, the subsurface shader, is going to go into the lower shader right here. Then we just plug that into our material. And there you go. With that done, we're going to have this very, very cool looking zombie with some surfaces scattering, a little bit of shadows. And this is way, way nicer to present in your socials, in your like uh, tech talk or whatever, than just having the basic ZBrush sculpt. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you want to keep working on our Sculptober event, make sure to join our Discord channel. We're going to have a lot of information there. There's a lot of people doing amazing, amazing things as well. So yeah, feel free to join. And if you want to support the channel, the best way to do it is, of course, by going and getting some of our pre premium courses where we cover a lot of these topics and more we're gonna have new courses very soon as well and i believe we're very close to the first monetization thing here in youtube as well so i could really use your subscription your likes your shares just so that more people know about the channel and you can help us grow so yeah thank you very much my friends i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye